Hey, it's good to be with you. I want to get right into the Word of God with you today and talk to you about the subject of your value and your worth before God. How do you establish what you're worth to God? We live in a world that our value and our worth is everything, and people will do anything to get it. But until you know what something's worth, you really don't know how to treat it. And that's exactly true in every part of your life. That's exactly how people live their life. Until you know your worth, you won't know how to treat yourself. It's why people make horrible decisions about their life. It's why people marry people or date people that are destructive. It's why we're self-destructive very often. Until you know what something's worth, you don't know how to treat it. You know, my wedding band isn't, isn't worth a lot of money. It's, it's now, the stuff we buy for our wives, that's worth money, but, but this is not worth much. However, to me, it's very valuable. And so I treat this with care. So for going on 27 years, I've never lost it. I always know where it is because it's valuable to me. But there are a lot of things I've, I've thrown away. Uh, someone gives you a pen that's kind of worthless. You don't even remember if you ever had it, let alone lost it. Until you know what something's worth, you don't know how to treat it. And until you know how to establish your worth before God, until you know how God establish, establishes his worth and how he sees you, and, and, and literally the appraised value that God puts on your life, it's critical. You know, in the book of James, let me read you from James chapter 1, verse 5, it says this. If any of you lack wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously and without fault finding, and it will be given to him. You know, so the scripture tells you, now listen, that God is not a fault finding God. But wait a minute, he's the God of all creation. He's perfect. Isn't it true that when God sees me, he sees me with a deficit? Well, that's true, but God dealt with that deficit. So many people, when they come to God, see God as a fault finder. The first thing they do when they come before God, if they have a need, if they go into prayer, is the first thing they start to do is to evaluate what they have done wrong or where, where, where they don't match up to the greatness of God. Now, I, I understand we should be in, always live a life of repentance and live a godly life. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a, a mindset that causes you to think that when God sees you, the first thing he's doing is finding fault with you. And James said that when we come to God, he said he's a liberal giver. In fact, the scripture said he's an open-handed giver. When he gives, he gives liberally, freely, and upon approach. And listen, and he gives without fault finding. That's very hard to believe when you've lived under a judgment mentality. Certainly God is the righteous judge of all the earth. And the, and the judgment of God is upon all of humanity. And yet he chose to take all and meet all of that judgment that was, that was due me. And he chose to level that judgment on Christ. And so when I give my life to Christ, when I, pour, when I give my life to Jesus and I invite him into my, into my heart, something amazing happens. I receive his righteousness because he bore my judgment. And until you begin to understand this process, of this great exchange and what occurred, that how God literally took your sin, placed it, my sin, upon Jesus, and gave us, by his grace and, and his mercy, his righteousness. It places you in a position where you literally can stand before God without the sense of guilt, without the sense of inferiority or even weakness, not in and of yourself. So let's get back to the question, is as your worth before God. How does God establish your value and worth. <clears throat> the fact of it is this, you never know what something's worth until you find out what it costs. I, a long time ago, I was in a situation where somebody was trying to determine the value of a home. And the guy that was all worked up about it was, it wasn't his house and he didn't like the, the appraised value of this home. He said, he, in fact, he kind of in the whole room said, you know, this house is not basically worth what it's being appraised at. And so he yelled out, to, actually he was talking to me, but he wanted everyone to hear. And he said, do you want to know what this house is worth? And I, and I kind of said, yeah, but I, I didn't really care. But he, he just put me in the middle of it. He said, this house, no matter what it's appraised at, is only worth what someone is willing to purchase it for. And that's your appraised value to God. You are worth what he was willing to purchase you with. Your worth is not determined by the worst thing you've ever done or the worst things that have ever been done to you. Your worth is established by what God chose to purchase you with. And you were purchased with the lifeblood of his son. So your appraised value to God is the very lifeblood of Jesus. So I want to encourage you, 
Set in your heart today that you are valuable and you are precious to God.